Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new hello welcome my name is Megan and today's video is going to be another week of workouts video I'm super excited to walk you guys through this workout routine that I have been doing for the past four weeks that I'm going to keep doing for the next two to three weeks basically up until I go on a week-long vacation then after that vacation I'm going to switch it up and do a new split if you guys have watched my latest week of workout video, you guys know I am getting back in my gym bag. Okay, last year it was just chaotic with tons of traveling and just back injuries and different things that were stopping me from having a really solid, consistent routine. I spent most of last year just going to the gym for fun and to move my body and for my health, which was amazing and I'm super happy that I still stayed consistent, but this year my goal is really to get back into intentional training. So programming and working hard in the gym with goals in mind so for me biggest goals right now are just getting back on a structured heavier lifting more progressive overload focused routine whereas before i was just kind of lifting weights not really challenging you know the weights i was using just kind of focusing on form and movement now i really want to focus on function and strength which i'm super excited about because things have been feeling good so i want to keep challenging myself getting stronger as well as growing and just doing all the things so that is what this program has been about it's kind of taking last week of workouts program and just elevating it a little bit more a lot of the moves you'll see are kind of the same that i was doing in the last program some are different all with the same goal in mind of growing the body and being consistent and just killing it in the gym it is going to be the exact same split so it's going to be two lower body days two upper body days the upper body days being a push focus so chest shoulder tricep and then a pull focus back and bicep and then the two leg days are just kind of jumbled so i used to do glute focus quad focus now i just kind of do whatever biggest thing with your own program is just making sure that it suits your lifestyle it suits your routine so taking inspiration is lovely but don't try to force this if it doesn't suit your schedule. If you guys ever need help making programs, I do personalized programs. You guys can look at the link down below and apply and I would love to help you guys out. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and let's get into this week of workouts. You guys always ask me about warm-ups, so I recorded my warm-ups for you guys, and I feel like it's easier with stretches to kind of just watch what someone's doing and replicate, but I'll still try to explain for you guys. So starting off with my leg day here, we are getting all kinds of things here. We're getting hip flexors open. We're getting ankles mobilized. This is a half kneeling hip flexor stretch here. Then when we're kind of coming down and opening up, we're getting a little bit of rotation through the spine as well as opening up the chest as well while also driving out into external rotation of the hip. This works hamstring and ankle and it's just nice to kind of open everything up, especially if you spend a lot of the day sedentary or seated, then it's likely that your hips are super tight. Here I'm doing a groin rock. So I have one knee down and then the other leg is straight out, toe pointed forward. That alone is enough of a stretch sometimes for that inner thigh or adductor region. So just seeing how your body tolerates that. Then if it tolerates it fine, then I want you guys to think about rocking back. So I'm bringing my heel towards my butt and that's just going to get a little bit of a deeper stretch, making it a little bit more dynamic. This is especially important before doing things like a wide stance squat or a sumo deadlift because we're really recruiting adductor in those positions. So making sure we take some time to stretch it as well. Then we're going into some pigeon here. So we have our front leg and goal is to keep that leg nice and straight. And then I'm coming down all the way down here. But if you guys have, you know, less flexibility, less mobility, it's fine to be more upright. If you guys have a table at your gym or a way to do an elevated pigeon, that's also a great stretch opening up the hips here even more and also just making sure to keep brace to the core as you go through these different exercises coming into too much flexion or extension of the back. Then we're getting into some hip 90 90s here. So thinking of dropping knees down side to side and then at the end range of each one, almost flexing that glute that's on the top. And that's going to give you a little extra stretch through that hip flexor. And this isn't all the stretches I ever do. These are just the ones that I did on this specific leg day. But if anything feels tight, take some extra time to work through it. And I also do the back sequence that I show you guys next before every single workout as well. Here we go with my daily back mobility. So here we're starting off with thoracic extension. So we're going to have foam roller right under our shoulder blades, hands behind our head to support it. 
butt stays down, feet stay down in contact with the ground, and we are just leaning over the foam roller. Looks super duper random, but it feels so good. It's opening up the chest. You might get a few cracks through that mid back. It's working through that T spine, so that mid spine is getting some nice rounding, and it's just an overall nice stretch, especially if you are work from home or constantly at a desk to open up that spine. Then we're gonna be on our side here. We're doing side lying open books. Top knee is gonna stay down on the foam roller. The reason for this is because if you notice your knee is coming up and the foam roller is escaping, it just means that we gotta work on a little bit of mobility through rotation here. This is gonna give us really good rotation in through the spine. Again, normal to get a few cracks through here. Goal is also to open up entire chest as well. And we're just getting a good stretch throughout the entire body. So these are stretches I do every single day ever since I had the back injury just to mobilize the spine and be more intentional with movement through my back. Next, we're going to be going into a laying on the foam roller stretch. This is really going to be great for working through opening up chest again, really working and opening up the pecs. The majority of us have just slumped posture. A lot of us work at home, work on desks, or on our phones a lot. Or even when we're driving, naturally we have that shoulder rounding coming forward. So it's really important that we open up our chest, especially before upper body day stuff. So working through, you know, different movements on that foam roller, just opening everything up. Or even in a doorway, stretching is super duper helpful. Then here we have thread the needles. So I am threading through and letting my back kind of rotate and you can still do this movement without the foam roller the foam roller just gives you a little extra added stretch and pressure to get a deeper stretch through the lat but you can still do it without it and it feels really good as well then for just my upper body day warm up after i do that back stuff then i just go into a little bit of stuff so i'm just using a band a lot of gyms have pvc pipes as well we're just doing arm circles so we're coming overhead we're going one arm at a time i like to do banded pull apart sometimes i'll do some w's just getting everything moving and then like i said in my last video for week of workouts be sure to also do warm-up weights before getting into your working heaviest weights for your main exercises as well. All right, you guys, it is Sunday, and I call Sunday the beginning of the week for some reason. I know a lot of people call it Monday. To me, this Sunday workout is the beginning of my workout week. So today we are gonna be doing a push day workout. This workout is going to look super similar to my last week of workouts if you guys have already seen it. So don't be surprised if it looks very, very much the same, but we are just gonna keep pushing on no pun intended, and hitting our chest, shoulders, and tricep muscles, really focused on isolation, growing them, and just kind of being consistent. I won't lie, this is my least favorite training day. I don't really love training these muscles, but it is really important to me to have diversity in my routine and make sure that no muscle becomes too weak to where its antagonist is too strong because that can lead to imbalances, injury, different compensations, and I just want to make sure that I'm well-rounded. Even if my goal isn't to have the strongest chest or the biggest shoulders or the biggest triceps, just making sure that I still give them a little bit of love in the week, just one day. Okay, so hopefully this inspires you guys if you guys are kind of anti-upper body but still looking to do something to keep it well-rounded. This is a great workout for you. I also have a beginner-friendly upper body workout with just dumbbells if you're more beginner and you don't want to use like cables and things like that. So without further ado, let's get our butts to the gym and let's get this workout in. Starting off our push day with our heaviest loaded pressing movement, which for me is going to be my chest press here. To set up, what I want you guys to do is bring those dumbbells, pop them on your knees, then think about slowly reclining back, keeping that core brace as you come back. We're gonna have three points of contact here. They're gonna be our feet on the ground, our butt on the bench, and our upper back on the bench as well. With form here, I want you guys to think about punching the sky. So knuckles are going to be up. It's hard to see from this angle, but my knuckles are up and punching the sky throughout the entire movement. My wrists aren't cocked back. If you feel pain or discomfort in the wrist, it's likely because you're not keeping your wrists stacked with your arms. In terms of your line of press, I want you guys to think about having the elbows tucked in a little bit closer to the body. So as you guys can see here, I'm at like a 45-ish degree angle, not wanting to be 90 degrees out or straight out right from the shoulder joint just because that's going to put a lot of stress there. Also, tucking a little closer to the body is going to recruit a little bit more tricep, which typically we can be a little bit stronger in how much we can press when aligning a little bit closer to the body. So after this, we're moving into our next chest exercise, which is going to be seated chest flies. I always just say picture hugging a tree, hugging a bear. What we're going to be doing here is just keeping those arms, letting them stretch fully out, almost like a Titanic, arms coming back fully straight. 
Then we're bringing them all the way in, thinking of clapping our hands together. As you guys can see here, with my grip, I'm not gripping hard onto the cables at all. I'm really just using the palm of my hand to press through. If you guys are doing this with dumbbells, obviously grip fully, or if you're doing it on the cable machine, you can also do it in this way. Really focus on getting that full stretch as you come back, as well as controlling the weight in. Then we're doing something a little crazy here for the shoulders. So I have three different weights. I have 15 pounds, 10 pounds, and then five pounds here. Obviously, if your gym is busy or you're going to the gym in peak hours, don't do this just because then you're kind of hoarding a lot of the weights. But if it's not super busy, this is great to do. I start off with a set at my highest weight going for anywhere from eight to 10 reps. Then I go into my next set with the lower weight, the moderate weight here, going for anywhere between 10 to 12 reps. Then I drop down to my lowest weight and by then I'm pretty fatigued. So what I ended up doing for the lowest weight is I did some single arm, some single arm revolving back and forth, really just trying to burn out and isolate that shoulder. The biggest thing is once you guys are getting fatigued through that shoulder, just make sure you're not shrugging through your upper trap or else it's just going to be growing upper trap and not really focusing on the delt. But if you are going to the gym at a peak hour or if you just don't want to take this many weights with you and you just want to keep it very simple, then I would just recommend doing normal lateral raises, picking a light to moderate weight, and then just really challenging yourself with the reps as you see fit. These are awesome for targeting those shoulders. And now we're gonna be moving into another shoulder exercise. This is going to be a seated shoulder press. My gym has this really fun machine. I've been trying to get out of my comfort zone more and try different machines because my gym has so many cool ones. And this was my latest discovery. So here, what we have is just a seated shoulder press. If you don't have this machine at your gym, don't worry, you can easily replicate and do this with dumbbells. Same thing here, really trying not to shrug with those upper traps or get those two engaged and really focusing on the last two reps being a nice challenge where you kind of have to press through but still being able to control as you punch up to the sky. Then to finish, we have one exercise for the triceps. I filmed two variations for you guys just so you guys could be comfortable with two options. The goal of both is the same. We're keeping elbows in the same place and coming to full extension. One is just on the cable column with the column at hip height. The other is with a dumbbell overhead and that's it for this workout. Today is Tuesday and we have our first leg day of the week. This one is primarily encompassed of hip thrusts. We start off the workout strong with five sets of hip thrusts, okay? I've been doing five by 10 for the last four weeks. This week is gonna be my first week at five by eight starting to continue to increase the weight. I've been increasing it every single week. If you guys know me, you know I'm hip thrust number one hater. That is public enemy number one for me. I hate doing them. I've just never really liked them that much, but they are something that are very important, obviously for glute growth, hip extension, loading through the glute, strengthening your glutes will strengthen your back. There's just so many benefits to in some way getting a thrust variation in. So even if heavy barbell hip thrust isn't what you wanna do, doing a thrust variation is still very important to have diversity in your routine. I really wanted to challenge myself with this and get back into it and just go hard and try to increase my strength because I used to be really strong with hip thrusts. They were something that I did weekly and I kind of fell off the wagon with that. And honestly, the biggest thing is setting it up. It just annoys me so much. But if my gym had a Smith machine, I would have no reason to complain because that is the like holy grail setup for hip thrust. You don't really have to worry about stability. You just can focus on isolation and it's really easy to set up. So if you have a Smith machine, definitely do it on the Smith machine. My gym doesn't have it. So we're barbell it. Let's get our butts to the gym. Let's get thrusting and get that booty pump. All right, you guys, we're starting off with barbell hip thrusts here. So you want to align your shoulder blades with the edge of the box or bench that's behind you. Then you want to bring the barbell and roll it over the hips. I'm just adding that extra layer of protection because it really digs in. Then you want to bring your legs in about shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointed outwards. Then using your arms to help prop you up, you're going to get set up onto the bench. Biggest thing is making sure that that core is engaged throughout the entire time. Then from here, you're just going to be hinging and coming all the way up into full hip extension. So thinking of locking out at the glutes at the top, getting a little baby squeeze before coming back down here. You're really going to feel this work through glutes, thinking of driving through those heels. We're doing a lot here. So we're doing five sets of eight. Before this, I was doing five sets of 10. If you guys are newer to hip thrusting or just haven't done it recently, I would recommend starting with a dumbbell, but still doing the same rep scheme here. Now we're going to be doing a lateral step down. Focus here is really on our glute medius, so that side and upper glute. We're going to have one leg up on a little bit of an elevation. I have four little blocks here. Just finding one that isn't too tall so you guys can focus on 
little hinge back at the hip, driving down a little heel tap with the non-working leg, but aiming to keep all the weight on the side of the working leg. Then we're supersetting that going straight into a single leg RDL here. Thinking about hinging back at the hips, getting a full nice stretch through the hamstring, so bringing that kettlebell down towards the toe, and then the non-working leg is just hinging back so that we get full pressure through the working leg. You can also do B stance if you feel like you struggle with the balance or mechanics of this. And for both movements that I just showed, I like to hold on personally just to make sure stability isn't a limiting factor. Then we're moving into hamstring curls with the ball. If you guys don't have a ball like this, you guys can absolutely just use the hamstring curl machine, but I wanted to switch it up here this week. So I'm coming up into a full bridge. So I'm, my hips are at full extension and then I'm using my heels. I'm digging them into the ball and I'm thinking of bringing that ball towards my butt. Heels coming towards the butt. This is going to really work the hamstrings in the shortened position where mine are severely weak. Then we're going to be finishing off with some back extensions. I'm holding some weight here. You guys can also do this body weight. If you haven't ever done this before, I'd recommend going body weight. But the biggest thing here is I have a slight bend in my knees. My toes are externally rotated. I'm holding the weight down below and then I'm leaning my body over the pad, making sure that you have the seat setting so that you can lean fully over, then thrusting into the pad, flexing glutes at the top of the movement. All right, you guys, it is Thursday, which is going to be our second upper body day of the week. This is gonna be our pull day. If you're unfamiliar with pull, it's gonna be our back and our bicep muscles. Pull is one of my favorite days. I love back day. I love all the different exercise options that you have with back. These are the ones that I'm doing currently, but this is super fluid. There's a lot of ways that you can switch things out based on what your gym has or with what you're comfortable with or feeling strongest at but this has been my back day now for the past four to five weeks, and I'm excited to walk you guys through it. So let's go ahead and get into it. To start off this back day, we're bringing back Gorilla Rose into my routine. I've really been liking these. So to set up, you're gonna have your feet at about shoulder width apart a little bit wider. Then you're gonna get into a slight knee bend, so a little bit of a squat, goal being that our back is flat, like mine is here at the top. I want you guys to really, really think about engaging through the core. If you guys' core isn't engaged, it's going to put a lot of pressure through the low back. If we're stable through the core and we're flexing through the quads, we have a nice stable base to really just work on rowing up. With the row, I want you guys to think about pulling the kettlebell up towards your hip while also keeping your lats engaged. So as you guys see me doing, really making sure I'm squeezing through my armpits rep to rep to make sure that my lats are engaged as that's what we're trying to work there through that exercise while also keeping core in mind as well. Then we're going into a high to low row. You guys can also do this on a cable machine or you can do it single arm half kneeling. I've done that in previous week of workout videos. With this exercise, you guys can see that I'm keeping my torso pretty much in the same place but allowing my arms to go fully straight to get that full stretch on the lat and then coming back and really pinching at that end range here. Then we're going for a single arm seated row. I've been doing these since the very start of my fitness journey and they are awesome. What I like to do is use a D handle, so I'm just doing one arm at a time. I'm letting my arm come fully back towards the machine before I pull all the way, thinking of again, squeezing through that armpit, really kind of emphasizing that end range when I bring my elbow back behind my body. And with this, you wanna keep it nice and light so you can focus on form and control. I also, as you guys can see me doing, don't pull with my thumb just to make sure we're not recruiting too much forearm and I let the cable rotate so I'm kind of rotating palm down when it comes closer to the machine and then pulling with a neutral grip as I'm pulling away. With these, just play around with it, see what's comfortable, but these are a great movement to really work right versus left. Then we're going into a straight arm pull down here, really working through the lats, getting them on full stretch. I have a full YouTube short on how to do these, which is helpful in case you guys don't get enough from this video, but I just have the rope attachment, gripping it at the bottom. I have a slight forward lean here, bracing through my core, keeping my arm straight the entire time. I'm letting it go all the way up towards the top of the cable, then pulling straight down with my arm, squeezing through my armpits there to engage the lat at the bottom of the movement. Then we are doing lat pull downs. This is the funkiest, craziest machine ever at my gym, but just do it with your typical lat pull down machine that you have at your gym with the cables. Biggest thing here is we're thinking about really tucking our elbows into our back pockets. So thinking of driving elbows back, keeping control throughout the entire movement. So we're keeping it nice and controlled, engaging our scaps, pulling down, keeping it nice and controlled as you come back up as well. 
Then to finish it off, we're doing some biceps here. So we're doing a little superset, starting off with an easy bar curl here. If your gym doesn't have these preloaded barbells, you guys can also just use dumbbells as well. Picking a lighter weight here and we're going for a bit of higher reps. Biggest thing that I want you guys to think about with curls is we're going to be pulling up towards our chest, keeping our elbows and our upper arm in the same place. So as you guys can see, the main mover of this is going to be my lower arm bringing it up to my chest. Then we're going to set that down and immediately go into across the chest hammer curls as opposed to doing all the reps at once. I did four on one side, four on one side, four on the other side, four on the other to give a little rest so that we're not swaying too much with the body or compromising form. With this, I want you guys to think about taking the tip of that dumbbell and touching it to the other side's armpits, making sure you don't smack your boob in the process if you have bigger tatas. Be aware of that. You guys can also do just a normal hammer curl as well. This is it for the workout. As you guys can tell, I was pooped, but it was such a good one. And we just have one more workout of the week after this. All right, we've made it to the end of the week. This is going to be leg day number two, where I focus on sumo deadlifts as well as unilateral work. And I've been loving this workout day a lot, really been trying to challenge myself with weights and slowly progress in all areas. So without further ado, let me just take you through it. I am super excited about this. This is actually the last week of this training block and we hit 225 for three sets of five. This was my end goal of this program was just to really reaccumulate strength with my sumo deadlifts again. After having the on and off back injuries, I just wasn't challenging him as much because I wasn't having confidence in my strength, but now we're getting back to where I'd hoped I wanted to be. Biggest thing with deadlift is making sure that each time we pull up the bar, Everything is moving in unison. So as you guys can see, when the bar is coming up, so is the rest of my body. My hips don't shoot up before the bar does. I have a full video on sumo deadlifts that I recommend you guys watch for a much more in-depth review of how to do them. And I can make an updated one if you guys want as well. Then we're going to be moving into our Bulgarian split squats. Absolutely hate these. I had to kick my shoes off. I almost forgot, but I like to have a stable base when I do these. I'm bringing that back leg back, elevating it. My gym has this nice little setup, but you can also just pop it up on a bench. I have a more forward torso lean because I want to be biasing my glutes here. I'm driving through the heel of that left leg, and I'm really thinking about pushing up keeping my core braced throughout, and I've been really challenging myself with weight here as well. I started off the program with just holding one dumbbell on the side of the working leg, and now have worked up to holding both and working on balance as well. So progress as you see fit. Don't feel rushed to just go straight into double loading. Then we're moving into leg extensions. For these, I've been doing pretty high reps and high volume. So I'm doing four to five sets of anywhere from eight to 10 reps, trying to increase my weight on every single set while also keeping form intact and just really focusing on burning out those quads. Then to finish off, we are doing these suitcase style heel elevated squats. With this, my goal is to bias my quads. So I have the heel elevation, which is gonna put a little bit more stress through quad. Also staying more upright by holding the dumbbells up at the side and keeping core brace is also gonna help bias quads more here. I'm also performing this under time under tension. So I'm doing a two to three second lower and then coming up at normal speed. So really going slow, 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 driving up here. And this is a really great way to burn out the quads. I was exhausted by the end of this workout. It was such a good one. And that is it for this week of workouts. That is going to be it for this week of workouts. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I love making these for you guys. And I will be making a new one when I have a new split after my trips. So I'm super excited to go on vacation and enjoy it, but also stay consistent with a routine and then come back and hit it even harder. Hopefully this helped you guys out. If you guys need any help or support, feel free to comment down below. Or if you're looking for a personalized program and a workout split like this, for your own life cater to your own goals i am doing personalized programs and you guys can sign up for that down below i have my application link down there also be sure to follow me on instagram i post a lot on there and i always try to post little clips from my workouts and if you guys want to shop any of my outfits that i was wearing in today's video everything is on our active always i love them so much i have tons of reviews on my page if you guys aren't sure about products and sizing and feel free to take a peek at those and if you want to shop them my support link is down below as well. And lastly, I will be getting a brand new supplements video up for you guys. All the supplements that I take and why. I'm working with PE Science. If you guys want to shop, use code SCHMEGS and that is going to save you guys a little bit of money off. But that is going to be it for this video. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys super soon in my next one. Bye!